Alright, I'm going to be doing an unboxing and installation of the EKFC 670 GTX water block. Now I'm installing it on the GTX 760 because it's got the same PCB design. If I can open the box. It's just oh, that side as well. Show you what's inside it. It's just a box. And then you've got your thermal pads, you've got all your bolts and Allen key and thermal paste, instruction guide. And inside here, you've got some padding. That's your link if you want to do SLI. But because it's actually mounted downwards, the inlet and outlet, I'm going to be attaching this to it so I can put a 90 degree fitting on it. And I'll just get rid of this box. And there's the GPU water block. It's a full cover water block. I'll just take it out of the packet. It's shiny. Ooh. Um. Yeah. So I will be installing it. Alright, now that I've took out my graphics card, GTX 760, I'll be installing the water block, which is a. Now this is the first time installing a GPU water block. So bear with me. I'm going to have the instruction manual as well, so now at first it says take off these screws that are holding down the PCB to the stock cooler and it says they're about 10, so I'll start off by removing them. I'll cut bits out if they take too long. Okay, now once you've removed all your screws, you need to disconnect your stock cooler fan. It was just a bit hard to remove, but I eventually removed it. Now, once you've removed all your screws from your stock cooler, put them back where they were and put them in a box. Because you'll need them if you want to take it back for warranty reasons. And also remove your PCI bracket. Now, for the fun part, installing the block. So... Now, going off the instructions, after you've removed all the screws, your bracket and everything else, you've got to remove the thermal paste that's already on there. Now, I've got some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. It says to use Q-tips or toilet paper. And you won't wipe it off with somewhere else afterwards because the toilet paper can leave bits behind. So, I'll just rip off a bit of toilet paper. And then it should just come off. bit messy but now next on is well it says to apply the thermal place first then the 
thermal pads, but I'm going to apply the thermal pads first and then apply the thermal paste. It just makes it easier to me. Alright, that took longer than expected. Now, as you've seen before, my card came with this little heat sink that was attached there. You just press the springs down, pinch them together at the bottom, and it should just pull off. Now, make sure you do remove both sides of the thermal pads. Now, as it says on the instruction manual, remember there, it says some of them that aren't actually chips are just the bits of solder and put a piece over it. Now, I didn't have enough to put a piece over the full area there, but it is covering the soldering part, so that's all that matters. It's just that it didn't cut them exactly, but it still works. Now, oh yeah, to apply the thermal paste. Now the thermal paste that came with it was this little thing. Can't really see that. It's just EK Tim thermal paste. But I'm using this MX4 from Arctic. Now it does say do the X pattern. The X method which is just from one corner to the other. It's a fairly reasonable axe. <laughs> now, on the other side, you've got these little standoffs which need to be placed on top of the card. I'm just reading it off here so we don't mess up. Um, it's supposed to go that way, isn't it? Yeah. So, where this little bit is there, that obviously goes over your PCI adapters there. So, just place it down, make sure it's on the standoffs. This car's going to be heavy as well. <laughs> this should be on the standoffs. Just give it a little press, not too much, so it sticks to the pads. Turn it around. And you'll be able to alter it a little bit. That looks right. Now, oh, god damn it! I'm gonna have to. Well, I could just actually put it on the end of the desk like this. Which makes it a lot easier. Now these come with tiny screws and washers. Just put one on the other. Now I'll screw all these down and I'll get back in a minute. Okay, now I've put all the screws in. Now you don't want to screw them too tight. 
just a little twist until you feel it tight and then stop. You work your way from the middle outwards. Now what it recommends that you do in the instruction manual is after you've installed all the screws, take them off, check for contact between the thermal compound and the thermal pads. I've just done that and those are making contact. So then I installed the PCI bracket. Now it tells you to put a screw, a washer and a bolt which comes with it because of the extra weight so it can support it. And I also put the EK link on because I'm going to be having it mounted obviously that way so I can put a 90 degree going up and down. And that's it. The unboxing and installation guide of the EK670 GTX. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. That's it. See ya.